Well, good morning. Good morning. Okay. Good evening. Now, my uh, well, I, I was going to say the uh, my boss, but uh, the the former owner uh, of Harbin Lumber. That that is his standard greeting. Uh, every once in a while, it's it's nice and dark, and he still comes in and you know in the evening, and it's uh, good morning. So I, I slipped in a uh, a Baron Harbinism for you. But uh, no, good evening. It is uh, good to see everybody back here tonight. Uh, before we begin our worship service, we'll go over some announcements. And uh, again, we have the ones from this morning uh, that uh, that we had listed. I, I did uh, was able to add in uh, the one there for Edith uh, again visiting her sister who had some surgery, and uh, uh, Bob still uh, at home and and uh, getting some west and wee waxation. Uh, and recuperating from uh, from all that uh, that uh, stint at the hospital. I don't know if we're allowed to do puns with, uh, but no, he is uh, recuperating though, and uh, we are uh, ready to see. He is. It really extended this whole vacation thing, um, and it's, but we're ready to ready to see him back. Of course, so remember uh, Pauline. She's got uh, the MRI uh, tomorrow from where she uh, fell and, and hurt her shoulder. And then, of course, all, all those, again, that uh, are asking for prayers. And Yes, ma'am. Um, can I just keep Mike's aunt, uh, his, his mom's sister, she just found out today she's got uh, bone cancer. She's got uh, a lot of long. Um, and his mama just had knee surgery. Her name is Gail. Shay's having some more doctor appointments coming up and the press going up. All right, so, yeah. all right, so again, uh, Shay with some uh, doctor's appointments coming up, and then uh, I, I know. All right, so uh, Mike, so mom had the knee surgery. Did that, did that go okay? It's, yeah, she's, okay. She's doing therapy with the bucket now. Okay, all right, because uh, because Florida could use a kicker. I don't know if maybe she might be okay after that. Just may have been. No, I'm glad she's doing better. And then, but uh, what was the other one? I'm, your aunt? My aunt. Okay, aunt uh, found out she had colon cancer. Okay. So, uh, yeah, definitely uh, definitely remember that. I know uh, just uh, uh, cancer is a uh, horrible thing. I, I wish it would uh, would go away. Uh, but uh, but definitely uh, keep keep her in your in your prayers. And uh, uh, of course, also remember to pray for our leaders as they are uh, you know making decisions that they'll uh, start with a source to make those decisions. Keep our uh, missionaries in your prayers as they are uh, doing the work of the church around the world. And uh, of course, we we did have uh, one announcement we made on Wednesday night. I forgot to to make it uh, this morning, so we added in a, a little extra slide here just in case Johnny didn't know his anniversary is coming up. Um, and so we can really, really remind him. Um, evidently, he's going to be here. Uh, on December the 18th at 5.30 p.m. in the Annex with Angie to help uh, celebrate their uh, 50th anniversary. And he's already got his present. He's already got his 50th anniversary yeah. pumpkin. I think that's the, yeah, that's the year of the pumpkin. Uh, I think that's <laughs> anniversary gift. I think so. it's yellow, but I believe it's gold. Okay, all right. So uh, he's, he is ready to go. But uh, definitely looking forward to uh, being able to, uh, to celebrate them too in, uh, in, their, in their 50th. So we will uh, move into uh, worship service now, and um, number 400 will be the first song, Living by Faith, if you want to turn there, and Charles will lead us in uh, our song service at this time. Four hundred. Four zero zero. <clears throat> I care not today what the morrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above. Confiding in his great love from a harm safe in his sheltering arm. I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. I know that he 
safely will carry me through, no matter what evils betide. My sin and your care of the tempest may know, if Jesus walks close to my side. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting, confiding in His great love. From a harm safe in His sheltering arm, I'm living by faith. Johnny to lead us in a word of prayer. <coughs> Father in heaven, we thank you again for this day and for this blessing, for the opportunity that we've had to come together to worship you. Father, we pray that you will help us to invite others and Pray diligent for those that have been named on sick list and need our prayers to you, Father. For we know that you are a great physician. Father, we pray and thank you for each and every one that is here. We thank you for this new day, this new week, Father, that we've got to go through. Father, we pray that you will help us do it and talk to someone about you that they too may come to know you as a Savior. Father, be with those that are on the road traveling. Be with Mike as he travels to uh, Louisiana. Keep him safe by his authority each day that he has to go. Father, we pray for our missionaries in farm fields, Gary Jones, over in Kenya, and other places, Father, that are willing to put their life forward to serve you and letting people know the true sake. Father, thank you again for this day. We pray that you will be also with Robert and his recuperation from this heart problem, Father. But we miss him so much. Forgive us for our sin, Father, in Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> Is there anyone who needs to partake of the Lord's Supper? And we don't need you, Nathaniel. I mean, we need you, we just don't need you this time. Uh, Song 622. 622. Tell me the story of Jesus. Some for me. 
me the story of Jesus. Write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Yeah, we got to skip over that. Okay. <clears throat> The imitation song will be number 653. 653. And now let's turn to 523. Every other song book I've ever had, 523 was in the front. <laughs> This is, this is a, we used to sing this at the congregation I was at and they would have a singing night and Ray Walker would show up and lead this song. And so forget Ray Walker, I can't do it that way. Anybody who can back up Elvis, you know, is pretty good. <clears throat> 523. <clears throat> there is beyond the azure blue a god concealed from human sight he tinted the skies with heavenly hue and framed the world with his great mind there is a god there is a god he is alive, he is alive. In, him in him we live So before we uh, start walking down our path tonight, uh, I did mean to uh, mention a, a couple of other things uh, in, in the uh, announcement section. Uh, 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 number one uh, and number two, uh, a couple of thank yous. Uh, we did have a couple of uh, last minute changes uh, to this morning's worship service and I, I, I failed to throw out some, or in, I guess in, in Bible class, but uh, uh, Johnny and and Charles uh, both uh, were some uh, not not uh, you know 
extreme last minute but last minute ish replacements and they they did an outstanding job so uh, thank you and and thank you for for filling in uh, this morning and then uh, of course also uh, again is uh, you know thinking on on those that uh, are on our prayer list and uh, Ron was uh, here this morning but uh, it, it, it took a lot for him to be here this morning, and so uh, definitely keep him in your prayers as he is uh, uh, fighting uh, what's going on with his lungs and just uh, it's, it's wearing him out. And so uh, definitely keep him in your prayers as he continues uh, that struggle. So we are looking at, if you want to go ahead and turn to uh, Proverbs chapter 3, we're going to look at uh, verses uh, 5 and 6, and... Uh, I, I got there faster than you did, probably, but uh, there, you know, as we look at uh, these instructions, the, you know, this is a, uh, here's a wise saying, and it comes from, uh, well, the world's smartest man, uh, just having to be inspired by God, and so this is something we ought to make sure we pay attention to, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And he will make straight your paths. And so as we uh, think on these instructions for us, and again, this looking at, he'll make straight your, your paths. Uh, God's offering to direct us. God is offering to lead us in the right direction. And, and well, we already know where that is. We already know where that's going, where that's leading, and that's toward heaven. So if, you know, if that's where we're, planning on going if that is our desire which you know I, I think that's everybody's because the alternative is, is not even really a choice then well here you go the path's been laid out for us uh, he's willing to direct us if we're willing to follow direction uh, look at the, the New King James Version I think King James also said he, he will uh, direct your paths so again instead of just making straight your paths he will direct your paths and again, that should be our objective. Uh, again, this is, uh, you know, if, if we're going to make it to heaven, it's going to have to be being led by him, led, led by his word. And which, to me, that it falls into a familiar verse for us, I hope, uh, Matthew 6, 33, are, are we seeking his kingdom first? Are we seeking his righteousness first? And, and again, that, that goes with, that, that means in front of everything. Uh, that that is in front of uh, people, family, jobs, uh, whatever we've got. Uh, first means first. Is, is that uh, is that how we make our decisions? Based on is that going to help me find His kingdom? Uh, is that going to be help me find what I need to be doing uh, to to be living a, a life of righteousness? And we look at uh, some examples. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, you know rightly dividing the word this morning. And, and looking at the Old Testament, and we, we find uh, these examples of, uh, you know, Bible heroes, uh, faithful people who, well, this was their objective. I, I want to make sure that I do what, what God wants me to do. And, and I, I, I know I've said this before, I just, I have to remind myself, I mean, these uh, faithful heroes of the Bible, they were just people. Uh, they were people who decided they were going to do what God wanted them to do. And, and they made their decisions based on that. We see that with, with Noah. And again, we talked about, can you imagine the, the ridicule he was getting? Because uh, it's not like he had, you know, went to, uh, you know, uh, Boston Harbor or something like that to try to build this, uh, you know, nice boat and, and put it in a dock there somewhere. And he didn't go to the Naval Academy to learn how to build ships. I don't know if you really have to go to a Naval Academy. It just sounds good, though. You would think you would learn something about ships there. But, again, he, he was instructed, build this floating box. Okay. You, you told me to do it, so I'm going to do it. And uh, imagine all the people around there thinking, what are you thinking? <laughs> Why are you building this thing? What's going on? Of course, with a warning from him, he was a preacher of righteousness. He was trying to tell him, get on this thing. You're, you're going to want to be on this thing. And, of course, uh, he, got his, he got his family on there. 
And then, of course, even beyond that, what happened when the door was closed? And people changed their minds. I'd like to be on the boat now. Can you imagine hearing the uh, knocking at the door? Uh, the, the cries for help. The pleas to you know, just open it. Just, just let me in. Or, or, or let my children in. Or, or let, you know, just, just, just crack it up. Let me just sneak in real fast. I'm sorry I made fun of you. And just the, the begging that he might have heard and then, and then the nothing that he heard. God closed the door. Noah didn't open it because God, he did, you know, God didn't want him to. He was doing what God wanted him to do. That was the objective for Abraham. You know, we, we talked about him this morning with uh, offering his son Isaac, uh, the one who had been promised uh, over and over again, promised, and uh, the son of his old age. And uh, God says, uh, Let's, I'll, I'll take your son. Offer Isaac to me. And he did what God asked him to do. Took him to the mountain there. Got everything ready. And, and just about did it until God told him to hold off. But even before that, as he was, um, as he was surrounded by family uh, in Ur of the Chaldees. And can you imagine? Hey, listen everybody, I'm I'm leaving. I'm heading out. I, I may not see y'all again. Oh, really? Where are you heading? I, I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, why are you leaving? Oh, God told me to go. And he's actually going to show me where I'm going. How do you know when you're going to get there? What are you going to do when you get there? Do you, do you know anything about what you're doing? God told me to go. And he was going to show me where I was going. Might have been a little ridicule. Leaving people he knew, place he knew, family, to somewhere. He wanted to make sure that he did what God wanted him to do. He wanted God to direct his path. Moses was another that... Uh, allowed God to direct his path. And again, can you imagine uh, this pathway led out of Egypt with this uh, nation of people, and it led all the way to the Red Sea. So you go one way, it's back to Egypt and slavery, and you go the other way, and it's drowned in the Red Sea. And God said, push forward. So Moses said, let's push forward. Yeah, let, let's see how God is going to deliver us. I, I don't know how soon he knew what was going to happen. I don't know if he got, uh, hey, here's a preview. This is going to be really cool. You're going to want to pay attention to this because the water is going to be divided. You're going to walk through on dry ground. We don't have insight into that. All we know is God said, why are you standing there? You know, move forward. God was directing his path. And he had a lot of people following him. They weren't the most uh, supportive people. And yet he still led them and moved in a direction that might seem a bit odd. Joshua, I'm sure, faced the same thing. Again, here he is leading this group of people that may not have uh, walked through on dry ground uh, through the Red Sea. Or maybe so young they, they didn't exactly remember that. And uh, they make it into the, to the promised land, just to the edge of it. And, uh, you know, it just happens to be a, a river in the way that was, uh, you know, nice and full and over full. And, hey, let's uh, push forward. Let's go take the promised land that God has given to us. You know, there's a river in the way. Uh, you think we should wait for maybe, you know, a, a drought? Or something, maybe until it turns into the Jordan Creek or something like that, so we can kind of hop over. 
God's directing our path. Let's move forward. And they walk through on dry ground after the river is pushed back upriver. That was the objective for Daniel. You know, we, we get slipped in there, yes. And Daniel knew exactly what the law was. Don't ask anybody else for anything, or else you can be thrown into the, the lion's den. And, you know, of course, I'd be nervous sitting there asking somebody to pass the mashed potatoes or something like that because I, I didn't ask the king. Um, oh, that's right. They weren't really worried about anybody else. All they were worried about was Daniel. They knew that he prayed to God just like God wanted him to talk to him. God was directing his path, even though that path meant he could end up in the lion's den. And he went there anyway. Again, there are so many examples of people who trusted in God to lead them in the right direction, and amazingly enough, every time it paid off for them. God's batting a thousand. If we are going to do what he wants us to do, we're, we're going to come out on top. Is this our objective? Trust in the Lord with all our heart? Uh, do, we, do we make sure we don't lean on our own understanding? In, in everything that we do, do we acknowledge God? And do we allow him to uh, straighten our pathway out? Again, the pathway that we, we want to we go towards heaven, right? So how do we get to heaven from here? Well, see verse above. <laughs> Again, he lays it out for us. So let's look at uh, this verse. We're going to break this uh, verse down a little bit. First, we'll look at trust in the Lord with all your heart and, and see what these uh, instructions mean. So again, do we have this trust like you know, we are Christians? We are a reflection of the Son of God. Do we have a trust like Jesus has in God? One of the one of the one of my favorite examples, I don't know if it's the best example, but one of my favorite examples of how much Jesus trusted in God. You remember when the weather started getting rough and the tiny ship was tossed? And so there they are out on the lake and, and just storm comes up and, and the uh, disciples are going nuts. It's weird, you know, this was, they, they were about to have their, their ship sunk. And, of course, uh, Jesus, well, the, his reaction was... <sighs> he was asleep. He wasn't worried about a storm. We well, trusted in God. He knew where his path was leading, and it wasn't going to be... To the bottom of the <laughs> to the bottom of the lake. Do we have that kind of trust in God? That no matter what's going on and no matter what the world is reacting like, oh that's right. I've got God. And more importantly, He's got me. <laughs> Do we have the uh, trust in Him with all our heart, even if that means it's going to lead us to our death. And I've got the example here that the first century Christians, and again, I mean, some of them, you know, they had the opportunity to denounce Christ, uh, you know, deny your faith in Him, and, and you know, let's let's worship Caesar instead of your God, and you can live. And sometimes it was even, of course, denounce God, uh, worship Caesar, and your wife will live. Your children will live. If not, then you'll get to see them die here in front of you, and then you'll die afterward. How much faith do we have? How much trust do we have that we are following the right path? Because it's the path that God laid out for us. If you look at Job uh, 13, uh, verse number 13, Let me have silence, and I will speak, and let come on me what may. What should I take uh, my flesh and my, uh, why should I take my flesh and my teeth and, and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Yet I will argue my ways to his face. Again, Job was uh, 
you know, going to have a conversation with God, but here is his trust in God. Listen, even if he was going to kill me, my hope's in him. Even if what, what's going on here was God, uh, you know, doing something to me, I'm still hoping in him, even if that means I'm going to die because of it. John chapter 21, uh, verse 18, So truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you were old and you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This, of course, Jesus said to Peter to show what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, Peter, at some point, people are going to lead you to some place you don't want to go. Your faith is going to be put on display to the point that you die because of it. Follow me anyway. And of course we know that he, he did. Second Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 3, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence by which he has granted to us his precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped from the corruption that's in the world because of sinful desire. Hopefully we trust him with all of our heart. We know what he has in store for us. These uh, precious and very great promises. <coughs> See, a man can create all kind of things. We've uh, created little spaces around the globe that uh, it's uh, heaven on earth. Uh, come here to relax, to take a vacation, don't worry about anything, and, and just, you know, just this nice, posh environment, and you just sit back and relax, and, you know, eventually you have to leave and go back and uh, make more money so you can spend the money to go to places like that. And even if you were able to just stay there forever, it's not going to be there forever. This world, this universe, is going to go away. What God's promising us, these uh, precious and very great promises, well, that's, uh, that's never going away. But to be able to get there, then we have to trust him with all our heart. Again, that goes back to what we talked about this morning. Again, not just checking off a box. Okay, I have to do this. I have to do this. All right, I've done this. Now I'm going to sit back and relax. It's trusting with all our heart. Do we really mean it? If we really mean that confession, we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Well, there's consequences that come along with that confession. There are actions that we need to be showing to show that we trust him with all of our heart. Of course, he says, with that trust, then it's do not lean on your own understanding. And uh, yeah, we'll go to uh, Job again for our reminder on, on this one. Uh, Job chapter 38, uh, as we see... Uh, God explaining, hey, I know more than you. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? You know, Job could have been a very, very intelligent person. He was extremely rich and, and you know, just, just you know, a powerful person. But, and he could have been really, really intelligent. I don't know what he got on his SAT, but he could have been an extremely knowledgeable person. Nobody knows more than God. And so here he is uh, asking God for some answers. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you, and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, 
Or who shut the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made clouds its garments and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed limits for it and, and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther. And here, you, uh, here, you, uh, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. God understands more than we will ever know. I mean, the world's smartest people who've ever lived are nowhere near the knowledge that God has. God knows the things that we don't even know to ask about. Thankfully, Job answered correctly. The Lord said to Job, Shall a fault finder contend with the Almighty? He who argues with God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am of small account. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand on my mouth. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> Job figured out I don't need to lean on my own understanding because I have no idea what it was like in the beginning of time when God created everything. I'll let God talk. You see in uh, chapter 42, verse number one, uh, you know, Job apologizes. He answered the Lord and said, I, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you and you make it known to me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Sometimes we think a lot of ourselves. See, there are things that we know a whole lot about. And so sometimes we take that as I, I know a lot more than I really know. And sometimes, unfortunately, the head begins to swell. Uh, pride begins to come in. And so uh, we uh, go out a little bit further than we should. When all God wants to do is lead us. You see, we're reminded in Proverbs 14 and verse 12, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Over and over again, you know, we have example after example of mankind making religion better. Uh, we'll put that in quotation marks. When all God wants us to do is do what he says to do. But this would be so much better. This would make it so much easier. Does it make it righter? Her? Uh, no, there's only one right, and that's God's instruction. So if it's anything different, that makes it wrong. Jeremiah 10, 23, I know, O Lord, that the way of man is not in himself, that it is not in man who walks to direct his steps. That doesn't stop man from walking that walk. But we know better than that, right? Uh, because we trust God with all of our heart. And so we want him to direct us no matter where that direction takes us. Man left to himself. Well, it's not a pretty picture. Uh, we see in Judges 17 verse 6, in those days there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. And, and I don't know, you know, we look at uh, different uh, time periods. I'm sure everybody in their particular generation thinks you know, this is probably the worst generation ever. I'm going to say this is probably the worst generation ever. <laughs> it, it is just getting worse and worse because this whole idea of everyone did what was right in his own eyes, well, well now we're, we're making laws to uh, allow that. If you think it's okay, then who am I to say that you can't and so now we're going to make laws to protect your choices and what you say is right. People are being hurt because they try to stand up for what is right. 
That's us leaning on our own understanding. That's just us leaning on, I want what I want. I am going to direct my steps. I am going to direct my path. Well, we know, because we, we've read to the end of the book, where that pathway is going to lead. It's also up to us to make sure we understand to share the knowledge of who needs to direct our path so we don't end up there. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And so, again, we look at uh, the Old Testament, see uh, Numbers chapter 12, verse number 3. Now, Mo the man Moses was very meek, more than all the people who were on the face of the earth. You know, Moses was an extremely powerful person. Again, when he talked about, you know, God was going to raise a prophet like him. I mean, you talk about somebody with some power. Again, just holding up a stick. Uh, able to uh, separate waters of the sea and walk through on dry ground. Uh, you know, smack a rock, here comes water. Uh, you know, uh, throw the, the rod down, it uh, you know, becomes a snake, and you know, pick it up by its tail, and it, it comes back into a rod. Uh, if you want frogs, frog legs for supper, he is your guy. He will provide you with a boatload of frogs. I, I mean, again, so many, so many uh, powerful things that he was able to do. When we look at this term, meekness, he was uh, describing, you know, very meek. Uh, you know, we, we've said this before, you know, meekness is not weakness. It's the idea of, um, you know, the, the bit in the horse's mouth. Uh, you have all of this power, and yet you're able to control which way the horse goes just by that little, little piece of metal in their mouth. And meekness is power under control. Uh, Moses was extremely powerful. And we see uh, just, just the plagues, all right, the, uh, Exodus 7 through 12. And these, uh, you know, these 10 plagues, and again, you know, looking back at you know, God was pointing out their, their, uh, their false gods and, and just uh, showing them how unpowerful these false gods were and, and reminding them, oh, yeah, they're fake. But Moses was at the forefront here. Moses is going to Pharaoh, going to a, a powerful world ruler and said, look at what's going to happen. There's going to be darkness. Uh, there's going to be frogs. There's going to be lice. There's going to be death. All of these uh, plagues, and you know, here Moses is bringing them. He had an entire nation following after him. Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 13. Again, as he is uh, about to uh, have them walk between the water. Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to be silent. He gave God the glory. Again, you know, God gave him this amazing power, and said, Yeah, this is God. Look at what he is going to do for you. We are absolutely blessed in, in this country, in, in, in this, this life that we live. And there are plenty of people who will tell you, here's what I did to get it. And it points back to decisions they made, and there's a lot of me and me and me in it. Well, again, I mean, you talk about the blessing just being born in this country versus somewhere like Kenya, where, you know, from time to time they have to look for food, where all we have to do is go to a grocery store. I mean, we can't find toilet paper from time to time, but normally we can find food. We, we go and, you know, if we need something, we, we, can, we can ask for it. I mean, we... We can order something and have it uh, brought to our house. We don't even have to get out of the house. These uh, nice Amazonians will come and, and, you know, and drop stuff off at your house for you. <laughs> and people want to say, look at how awesome I am. God has blessed us. And we look at, uh, again, the hope that we have of heaven. 
it's not something yes we had to do something to be able to become a christian we have to do the work that he has laid out for us but as we mentioned this morning it's the grace of god he didn't have to save us are we acknowledging god in everything in, in all of your ways again we're whether we're talking about something that is religious and and something again talking about where we're going for all eternity or are we talking about the, the food that uh, we went to the store and paid for are we acknowledging him in all of our ways because that's what he's asking for and he deserves even more than that We look at uh, Matthew chapter 11, uh, you know, we, we sing this uh, from time to time, but, you know, come to me, all you who labor, all who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Again, you know, some, listen, I, I want to make my own choices. I'm my own man. I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And Jesus has put this yoke on. Let me turn you in the way that you need to go compared to sin and where sin is going to lead you his yoke is easy his burden is light but it's still a yoke it still means we have to move ourselves to the side and let him direct our path do we acknowledge I'm being guided by God and his word. Do people know that? Do we acknowledge him outside of our head? Do we use our, our words? Matthew chapter 28, uh, given the great commission, Jesus came and said to them, uh, it's Matthew 28 verse 18, so all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Uh, you know, we've asked a very simple question before. If, if Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth, how much do we have? That's some very basic math. If he has all, we have none. He wants to direct us. He has given us instructions. One of those instructions is, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. There's some, uh, there's some absolutes in there. Again, it's, it's all authority, so we, we know that one. Uh, go and make, go therefore. What's that therefore, therefore? Uh, because he just said, I have all authority. So he said, go. If you have time, if you're not busy, if you're not you know, doing something, no, he, he, that, that's not even reading between the lines. He just said, go. Make disciples. Make copies of me. Of all nations. And again, it's, uh, here's what you're going to teach them. Observe all things that I have commanded you. Oh, he, he's commanding us. Directing us. Giving us orders. And observe all of them. Not the uh, pick and choose, ooh, this makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't think I want to do this. Uh, this is really going to hurt my friend's feelings, so I probably shouldn't do that. I don't want to lose a friend. Um, no, as that, that three-letter word, he just happened to sneak in there. Observe all things, uh, all that I have commanded you. In Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 9, uh, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Again, this, this confession that we have, again, you know, we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Well, that puts him in a particular place, right? Jesus is Lord. And you know, we, we have to remember what that means. He is over us. Lord is, again, we're uh, you know, servants. We are, we are lowly. And he is almighty. Do we confess with our mouth because we believe it in our heart that he is our Lord? Because he can't be our Savior if he is not our Lord first. Again, it's everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. 
it's more than just saying the words. It's more than just making the announcement that Jesus is Lord. We actually have to believe that. And that means we're going to act like it. Because we're going to be following his path that he's laid out for us. Of course, we do all that. He will make straight your paths. And so we see in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16, all scripture is inspired by God or is, is breathed out by God, profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. There are things that we have to do. Thankfully, he said, our instructions are already given to us. It's, it's laid out for us. And again, it's not just uh, people writing, here's what I think you ought to do. If we have it in the scriptures, that's because God gave it to us. Do we treat the scriptures like that? I mean, we know we, we've heard stories of people who uh, you know, create their own translation by cutting out scriptures that they don't like. Or maybe instead of highlighting with a nice yellow highlighter or something like that, they highlight it with a, a black permanent marker so they can't read it. No, my Bible doesn't say that. See, you can see right here, it, it doesn't say it. I marked it out. And they're okay with that. How do we treat God's word? Again, that goes back to, you know, is there a God or not? And we have that discussion, you know, with the you know, scientists and and they keep uh, shoving this idea of, uh, you know, we came from some happy accident billions upon hundreds of billions of years ago. And, you know, if I, if I said that this little mouse came, you know, just all of a sudden it appeared here. It must have been just some accident. It, it just uh, evolved into, a, you know, a mouse. And now I can control my computer where they think I, I'm crazy. And yet you look at, I mean, just the eyeball in a human. Uh, you just look at one of them. And it is way more complicated and high tech than anything that we've ever created. And we got a whole body full of all of uh, you know systems like that. And then we have a lot of bodies around here. Science has to throw this idea out that it was just some happy accident because if all of a sudden they admitted what they already know, design demands a designer and they see the design that is in us, that means that somebody thought about us, created us, and that has consequences. That means, gasp, there is a God. And then that means I've got to do something about it. Well, they start with the answer of, well, first we know there is no God, and so now we have to come up with something else for while we're here. Well, it's the same way with us in the scriptures. Do we truly believe the Bible comes from God? I'm sure if I ask uh, a lot of different people on the street, they're going to say, oh, yes, of course. Do your actions prove your answer? Or do we still go through and pick and choose what we decide? You know, I like this verse. I'm not a fan of this verse. Again, making straight our paths. We've got everything we need right now. Uh, Jude, uh, the verse number three, Beloved, although I was uh, very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. Hey, nothing new is coming. We've got everything that we need. Uh, so you know, Windows just uh, upgraded to uh, uh, Windows number 11. And uh, so, you know, the, the, it, uh, you know, it's supposed to make your computer work awesome. Wink, wink. <laughs> um, so, amazingly enough, as they release these things, then they figure out, hey, this doesn't work right uh, with this over here. So now we're going to have to give it an update so that it will work better. And then once that happens, this over here doesn't work as well. So now we're going to have to give it an update to go over here to fix this. So this will work with this. And we keep waiting on these updates to make our life beautiful again. 
We don't have to do that with the scriptures. Everything has been given to us. There's no updates coming. We've got it. Are we acting like it? Uh, John chapter 12, verse 44, Jesus cried out and said, Whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. Whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that whoever believes in me may not return or may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day, for I have not spoken on my own authority. But the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the Father has told me. And of course, he goes on later to talk to his disciples and said, listen, uh, don't worry about what to say uh, because I'm going to send the Comforter. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. And he is going to be able to remind you of everything that I've taught you. So we have words written by people remembering what Jesus taught. Jesus taught what God wanted him to teach. Are we listening? Do we act like we are reading God's word? Paul was not ashamed of the gospel for it's the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Words save us. But of course not just the words but us being obedient to them. See in uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse number 1, And I, when I uh, came to you, brothers, did not come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom, for I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. We've got this message miraculously given, miraculously saved for generation after generation. God said it would be available to us, and it has been. As hard as man has tried to burn it, uh, bury it, get rid of it, make it to where people couldn't read it, it's still here, it's still available. Are we taking advantage of it? Again, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. So, uh, who's leading you? I mean, we got, we got two choices for being led by the Father in his way. Or, even if we're following our own path. Well, that, that's just being led by the devil. Are we following some man? Are we following, uh, you know, the uh, the history? Uh, you know, are we following? This is the the path that my family took. God wants us to have our own faith in Him, our own path that He is directing, not us following. This is what my mom wants me to do, even though this is what my mom wants me to do. But God wants us to follow him because that's the right thing to do. He's laid out the path for us. This pathway leads us to where we want to go. And there is only one way for us to be able to get to where we want to go. And we remembered that way this morning. It, it started, of course, before time began. But this plan for us, this pathway, led all the way to Jesus coming to this earth and dying on the cross for us. He gave us our, our ticket. He, he purchased us. We just have to go get it. He was on the cross for us, paying for our sins.
so that we didn't have to. So if we look at the way of the cross leading home, that is the pathway that God wants us to be on. And sometimes that means that we have to make decisions that uh, lead us down a path that uh, become difficult. Are we still willing to do it? His promise is it's worth it. Jesus died on the cross to be pleasing to God, to fulfill all righteousness, because he knew obedience to God was worth it. And he knows. He came from where we want to go. Is there something that we can do tonight to encourage you to get back on the pathway, uh, the way of the cross? We're going to sing this song in just a minute again to remind us there is just that one way. But if there's something that we can do, answer a question or encourage you, uh, pray with you, pray for you, something, we, we'd love to be able to do that. And even if that means uh, later on, uh, and you're, you're thinking about, again, we're family. Call us. Talk to us. Email, text, come by. We want to make sure that everyone is on that path so we too can have that uh, grand family reunion on the day of judgment when we enter into heaven. If there's something tonight, though, we'd love to be able to help, even now as we stand and sing. I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light. If the way of the cross I miss, the way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. I must needs go on in the blood-sprinkled way, the path that the Savior trod. If I ever climb to the height sublime where the soul is at home with God, the way of the cross leads home. The
We thank you, Father, for the blessings, uh, the responses that you've given to us, to our prayers, the blessings that you fill our lives with daily. And we thank you that uh, we have this privilege and this blessing to be able to express to you our most profound thoughts and desires. And we pray for those who were mentioned earlier who uh, are in need of your blessings specially. And we pray for uh, all those that were mentioned that recovering from surgeries and from illnesses and uh, who are continuing to suffer uh, challenges with their health. And we also want to remember Mike's uh, mom and also uh, his aunt. We want to remember Shay and Ron. And we also want to remember Dad and, and uh, the recovery for uh, uh, each of these and for their health and for their well-being. Father, we recognize that we are so richly blessed in, in this life, but we are not distracted from the fact that the life that you've promised us is even greater. Help us to be good stewards of all your blessings that you've given to us, especially for your word, that we might share it liberally with others around us, that we might live our lives by it to be a, a light that reflects Christ, and that others might be attracted to this way of living, realizing that only in this life may we have the choice of where we will spend eternity. We look forward to the time that we can be with all those who have gone before us, and especially to, to be with you, our God and our Savior. We pray that you would forgive us of the shortcomings in our lives, and that we might uh, repent of those things and turn away from them, and that we might live more faithfully for you each day. Thank you so much for your great gifts, for your love and your mercy and your compassion. Thank you so much for the church here and all of the work that you have afforded us to do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job.